Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now as you guys at home know, or if we have new viewers here today, the reason that we have this show is to promote good mental health. So we cover subjects that will help you in some way and to lead happier and healthier lives too. And the area that I want to pay close attention to today is our home. And why is that? Well, did you know that more accidents happen at home than anywhere else? According to the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, or ROSPA, they say that every year there are approximately 6,000 deaths as a result of a home accident. More than 2 million children under the age of 15 experience accidents in and around the home every year, for which they are taken to accident and emergency units. Children under the age of 5 and people over 65, particularly those over 75, are most likely to have an accident at home. Falls are the most common accidents which can cause serious injury at any time of life. The risk increases with age. More women than men over the age of 65 die as the result of an accident in the home. Every year, over 62 children under 14 die as a result of an accident in the home. Around 25,000 under fives attend A&E departments every year after being accidentally poisoned. An average of 13 children a day under the age of four suffer a severe injury from a burn or scout. A hot drink can also can still scold a small child up to 15 minutes after it's made. Wow. More accidents happen in the lounge living room than anywhere else in the home. And every year, more than 4,200 children are involved in falls on the stairs and 4,000 children under the age of 15 are injured falling from windows. Gosh, so those are really disturbing statistics. So obviously the aim of today's programme is to prevent these kinds of accidents. So, you know, it is very distressing, especially obviously if there's been a death in the family due to that. And we are going to be showing you some, some videos afterwards of something that's actually happened to, to um, a lady and her husband, which was really distressing. So we want to help you guys at home prevent these kind of things from happening in the first place. So let me tell you about our guests. So we have parenting coach Sharon Lawton and she's going to be going through each uh, room in the house and telling us what to look out for and how to safeguard children. And we also have public health advisor Sheila Merrill of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents who will also be telling us about prevention and what their charity does. And um, the, RS, the ROSPA charity has also provided some really helpful videos which we will be showing you later on. Plus, I'll also be having my own three tips on feeling safe within yourself. So that's going to be a little bit different from a different angle. But first, we do have the news with a lovely Excel. Hello, Excel. Hello, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> so obviously this, this show is all about prevention today because yeah. we don't want our viewers to have to go through something that is totally preventable. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, you know, the home is actually quite rife with a, a lot of things, a lot of, um, if you like, opportunities or occasions for accidents to happen in the home. And I think it's quite important for us to know how to prevent them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so we'll hope we'll reach out today to help one or two people out there. Okay. Um, Again, following on from some of the statistics you mentioned earlier, the cost of home accidents, this um, stats we have from the ROSPA charity, it says the total annual cost of home accident casualties who are treated for their injuries at hospital, around 2.7 million people each year, is estimated to be £45 billion. Pounds. Wow. Based on the average cost of 16900 per victim. I mean, that already just like, whoa. But anyway, I suppose it's looking at an average over mm -hmm. different kind of categories of injuries, isn't it, I suppose? Um, it says here, this figure does not include the cost of home accident deaths, which number in excess of 4,000 every year, and for which the cost per fatality is estimated at 1.6 million pounds. Mm -hmm. And it does not include the cost of people who seek GP treatment after a home accident. So in fact, the true cost to society of accidents at home is likely to be far higher. The cost findings are based on the loss of contribution to the economy, the value of avoidance of injury, and the cost of medical, social security, and other support services. Costs mm -hmm. to the individual and long-term care are not included. So, I mean, you can see there, even with a conservative estimate, that's already like yeah. a ridiculous mm -hmm. amount. And so the ROSPA launched many campaigns, such as campaigns to prevent child choking 
and poisoning in general and from cleaning products too to raise awareness. And so I have this um, news item from Scotland. So hello to our Scottish viewers tonight. Um, it says thousands of storybooks that help to teach youngsters how to stay, stay safe at home are being made available free of charge oh, that's to good. child care professionals across Scotland. And it's mm. called the birthday party. The storybook, part of the Go Safe Scotland initiative to educate children on safety, has been made possible thanks to donations. The birthday party follows a group of friends as they prepare safely for a birthday party, including making and decorating cakes, putting on costumes and tidying up after themselves, teaching them some mm. good home manners there as well. The first story will be followed up by a series of e-books to explore other areas where children have accidents, the majority of which can be avoided with small changes in everyday behaviour. Yeah. So that's pretty good. That's there. a really good initiative, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so mm. too. Um, another th um, thing here as well, another type of accident that can happen is um, from food poisoning as well. We talked about um, poisoning earlier, which is not just limited to chemicals and the like. But um, it mentions here as well that E. coli infections rise by a thousand across England. And it talks about the number of people infected with E. coli across England rose by more than a thousand last year, as figures have shown. Public Health England figures show that there were 39,604 from September 2014 to September 2015, compared with 38,291 for the same period the year before. Mm -hmm. The health authority said it was working to reduce this rate. So, I mean, we must have heard about, you know, you know how, how we can get E. coli infections, Chrissy. I'm going to put you on the spot <laughs> now. <laughs> Well, okay, it's, it, it comes with, I think the sort of um, easy way people can talk, remember is when you cook with raw meat or you mm. touch, handle raw meat and you don't wash your hands properly, basically. So to avoid... And that's all meat, is it, not just chicken? No, I don't think it's, no, it's not just, all, it's all meat mm -hmm. in terms of raw meat. And then say, mm -hmm. for example, you touch, you don't wash your hands properly and then you kind of handle a carrot and you just eat yeah. it. You're obviously transferring, you know, raw bacteria mm -hmm. that you end up with, which is not the friendly kind. Um, so to avoid E. coli infection, you're advised to wash your hands thoroughly after using the toilet, before and after handling food and after handling animals. Remove, remove any loose soil before storing vegetables and salads. Really? Yeah. I mean, if it's mm. obvious soil, not yeah. just the fact that it's, you don't have to go sort of scrubbing, scrubbing all your potatoes <laughs> before you start putting them in the fridge, but when you actually have soil, because okay. they can, you know, they can... Um, That's one I didn't know. They can live in mm. there, yeah. And it also advises that you wash all vegetables and fruits that will be eaten raw. Because I find sometimes people oh, go yeah, into supermarkets and they just open the bag and go, <laughs> no, don't <laughs> do that, don't. But... This is, you know, this is another way that we can prevent this. Also, it says here, store and prepare raw meat and unwashed vegetables away from ready to eat foods. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing as well about, you know, how we even store things in our homes, yeah. in our fridge. So, you know, we have to store things like that away from each other. And it says, do not prepare raw vegetables with utensils that have also been used for raw meat. Cook or mince meat products such as burgers and meatballs thoroughly. And people who have been ill should not prepare food for others for at least 48 hours after they have oh, recovered. Oh, really? Yes, we want to make sure we don't have any... I'm not really sure about the, the mincemeat because people have burgers dripping with blood sometimes. I know, it's but like, I, <laughs> It's kind of... I think it's probably because there is still a certain temperature you will reach mm. whilst cooking and it's not like eating raw. And I think if it needs to, if it's going to be eaten raw, it's treated in another way, even okay. if it's not cooked yeah. with heat, it's treated in some other That's way that will make it, you know, edible. But not that, you know, I don't think it's safe to just have the meat without treating it in any form. Mm. Like even with sushi, we talk about it being raw fish. It's, it's cured in some way before it's eaten. So mm. it's about taking steps, not necessarily maybe not cooking by heat, yeah. but That's you know, something. to make sure Excel, thank mm. you so much. Oh, wow. Is that my time coming <laughs> yes, to it the is. <laughs> Thank you so much, and we'll see you again next time. You're welcome. All right, guys, so now let's check out this video from Rospa on what can actually happen in the home with children.
we got down there, the whole place was locked up, so we went along the beach to look for them. We felt there was something wrong, but we didn't know what. And uh, when we ran back again, the police were stuck in traffic, so that's why we broke oh, in. So we found sense. the boys. Apart from our own families being devastated, our whole community was devastated. Mm -hmm. On October the 10th, 2010, I woke in the early hours of the morning, gave Leah and Lewis, who shared a bedroom, they were twins, a bottle of milk each, and went back to bed, a perfectly normal day. Seven o'clock, my eldest son came into the twins' bedroom, as normal, to play with them, and found my daughter Leah, who was then 17 months, hanging from the blind cord. That day changed our lives forever. So our hearts really do go out to the families affected by those accidents. Now up next we have parenting coach Sharon Lawton who will be telling us about how to accident proof your home to keep the kiddies safe. And later on I'll be sharing with you my own three tips on feeling safe within yourself. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to today's program where we are speaking about being safe within your own home and preventing accidents because obviously when accidents happen it's very distressing and can cause a lot of upset in a family. So now we have parenting coach Sharon Lawton who will be going around each room of the house and telling us how to safeguard our children. Welcome to the show, Sharon. Hi, Chris. So nice to see you again. Thank you. So a very, very important topic. Obviously, mm. when accidents do happen, especially with children, it is very traumatising. Yeah. People, you know, get unwell even mentally because mm -hmm. of things that have happened. So our job today is to try to help those at home prevent accidents from happening in the first place. Mm. So if you can talk us through sort of how, because you're a mum, you know, about safety and everything, talk us through what you maybe do in your house and mm. things that parents can watch out for. Yeah, okay. I think sometimes we think it's really obvious, you know, but um, there are over, usually in a year, over a million um, children are um, entered into A&E as a result of sort of general accidents in the home, and the majority oh, of those are under fives. So yeah. there are some really easy basic steps that, that we can um, that we can put in place to prevent lots of accidents mm -hmm. from happening in the first place. I think the one thing I would really advise parents that I'm working with and viewers watching this evening is to try and get on a first aid course or a child yeah. sort of paediatric type thing and they're easily accessible through local children's centres, British Red Cross, um, mm. So John's ambulance even. So that would definitely be something I would highly recommend in the first instance. I think. Actually, Sharon, while you're saying that, we are going to do that on the show. We can actually, very soon, guys, we are going to have something on the show where we can show you some basic things that you can do you know, until you get round to going on your first aid course, I think that'll be quite good for our I viewers. I think that would yeah, be yeah. amazing, yeah. actually, a really, really good thing to be able to show viewers at home, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so first aid course, and what, what else would you, would you mm. recommend? Say, like, maybe let's start with uh, kitchen safety. Okay. Because I remember, actually, it's bringing back memories now, a friend of mine, she was looking after her niece, mm -hmm. it, I think it was the first time that her sister had entrusted her with her daughter. Unfortunately, she was boiling the kettle and the, the yeah. child reached up and pulled the yeah. cable, mm -hmm. boiling hot water all over her, but it was really bad. They even had to call a helicopter. They, they came and oh, picked her gosh. up from the local park down the road and she was, she was distraught. Yeah. She yeah. was really distraught and then it caused major problems between her and her sister. Yeah. It was a mess. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. interesting, isn't it? Because we might think that our own homes are really safe and, you know, as a parent, we may have done everything we think that we, we can humanly possible, mm. but it's not just our own homes. As you've, you've rightly said, 
you know, our children are looked after by family yeah. and friends, and, and their homes aren't always as maybe safe, particularly if they haven't got children themselves, because yeah. they might not be in yeah, that mindset. True. So I think that's one thing to think about. So kitchens in particular, mm. um, I think are, are areas where lots of accidents can happen. Um, as you've rightly already pointed out, any cords hanging down are a safety hazard for little hands to grab hold of and pull. Mm -hmm. um, and there are lots of things in the kitchen I think are potentially are, are dangerous. Um, if children are really little, um, you know, if we can avoid them being in the kitchen while you're cooking, you know, because yeah, there are lots yeah. of hot things going on, lots of mm. bubbling things on the stove, you know, and young children want to be like their parents and want to be mummy and play cooking and things, yeah. you know, so they, they're naturally curious. Um, so that type of thing. But also um, when we think about knives and scissors and all of those sort of things, you know, to keep them out of sight and up high. And it's mm. amazing how quickly um, little people grow enough to be able to yeah. open drawers and, and take things out. You know, they're watching all of the time, mm -hmm. so you know they see where things are. So there's those sort of those sort of hazards. And then of course there's the cleaning fluids. Yes. Big so one. big, big one. And if you think about it, most cleaning fluids are in brightly coloured uh, primary colours bottles. So they're <laughs> really attractive to young yeah. children. Um, and so it looks a very exciting thing to sort of touch and, and hold. So, you know, all cleaning fluids in a locked cupboard, if possible, mm. up high. If not possible, obviously down low with, with catches on them as well. So, yeah. you know, just sort of those ba basic things can prevent lots of easily avoidable okay. accidents. Let's move into the living room mm. now. Okay, so living rooms, um, what we have of course are things like fires and radiators that can mm. be very, very hot. Um, fires, we can prevent hopefully gas fires, electric fires with, uh, with guards around them. Mm. If it's an open fire, not only just a, a fire guard, but also the, um, like the spitting, you know, you get sort of yes, from open yeah. fires. Mm -hmm. So those sort of guards as well, which would be really important. Um, and also window locks. Um, mm. And furniture not close enough to windows for small little ones to climb up on to be able to open windows. Don't even think and about climb things out. like that, do you sometimes? No, like, no, no, exactly. Um, and where window locks are concerned, yeah. we can also have sort of safety catches so they're only able to open them for about two and a half inches. Yeah. So if they did open them, it wouldn't be enough for them to be mm. able to climb out. So again, you know, very easily accessible. Um, to get on the internet or um, or even sort of in, in most of the places like Mothercare, etc., you can buy yeah. those sort of things to be okay. able to fit. Right, so we've spoken about the kitchen and the living room. Now yeah. let's move to the, the bathroom. Okay, bathroom. Mm -hmm. So lots in the bathroom. Again, cleaning products, fluids, yeah. you know, probably best to keep them in the kitchen up high. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have medicine cabinets, don't they? You know, um, and they keep all their sort of medicines and razors and all of that sort of stuff um, in, in the bathroom. So again, locked cupboards up high. Um, out of reach, out of sight mm. of little ones. Um, then, of course, we have um, the bath. Um, and young children should never be left unattended in a bath under mm. five um, because they can drown in, you know, two and yeah. a half, three inches of water. So always supervised um, and, of course, checking the temperature. Um, first of all, if it feels too hot or feels too cold, the child shouldn't be in there. Yeah, I, was just, I was just telling Sharon before the before we started recording about the case, mm. my mum's neighbour where the, the dad just left, the child was in the bath, the dad just left for like literally a couple of seconds just to answer a call, door slammed shut, he couldn't open it, the, the, something happened to the pipes and all the hot water went all over the child, really severely burned. Yeah. You just don't expect anything no, like that to happen. So yeah. yeah, and it horrible. takes a nanosecond for, yeah. for accidents to happen, you know, and that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Mm. So even sort of nipping um, from the bathroom, you know, to get something from, you know, yeah. outside of the bathroom to bring it back, you know, it can happen that quickly. Yeah. And drowning, of course, is silent. So yeah. you wouldn't know if your child mm. was in distress. So, you know, never leaving little ones alone in the bath. Um, equally, not asking, you know, sort of slightly older siblings to monitor Get little ones yeah, in the bath. Yeah. That's an unfair expectation on a, you mm -hmm. know, on a, a, an older sibling to, to expect them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's those sort of the, those sort of areas as well um, around um, bath and bathrooms. I think. Okay. And I finally the bedroom. 
I don't know if I, maybe if we have time for the garden, we'll do that as well. <laughs> but let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about the bedroom first. Yeah. Oh, the other thing just about bathrooms before we yeah. move into the bedroom is, of course, taps can get very hot. Mm. So um, be aware that um, toddlers fiddle and they can fiddle with hot taps or touch hot taps. Yeah. So you know, again, there are devices that can be put on there to sort of mask that sort mm. of that touching and stuff. So yeah, so okay. bedroom. Bedroom. Yeah. Um, many of us now have hair straighteners and hair straighteners get very hot mm. and stay very hot for a very long time. So again, be aware of what you know, is being left out in the bedroom yeah. you know, when we get ready in the morning or in the evening. Um, perfume can be sort of very toxic. Remember, perfume generally has a little bit of alcohol in as well. Mm. Um, so you know, little ones um, want to play, grown-ups and use makeup and all of that sort of stuff. So, and also drinking the, um, the perfume. I know that sounds a bit odd, yeah. but I did hear of a case where you know, a, a child drank their, their mum's very expensive perfume. It wasn't an atomizer, it was you know, oh, a, a, yeah. a bottle that mm -hmm. poured out um, and was, was quite sort of poorly as a result. So, little things like that. Um, depending on whose bedroom it is, of course, um, the window locks are again also very important upstairs. But if it's mm. the younger child's bedroom, thinking about where the cot or the bed is positioned in the bedroom is right. really important. Okay. So again, up next to windows probably isn't a particularly good idea, again, for the sort of the climbing mm -hmm. element. But also, there are, there's been lots of cases recently around strangulation from cords, really? from curtains and blinds. Wow. So tie them up or cut them. You know, little people investigate the world. They've got natural curiosity. They want to climb, they want to touch, they want to find out. So, yeah, you, yeah. you know, that's I mean, horrendous, you know, not very nice. Bars in cots as well, you know, and, and banisters actually, if we're sort of talking about upstairs and downstairs, a, a particular gap little mm. ones can squeeze through and again you know can cause um, yeah. damage as a result but I think a lot of these tips that some of them are mm. also applicable to pets as well because I'm oh, just gosh, thinking yes, now yeah yes. because uh, my friend got home one day and she found her cat hanging upside down from like the cord of, of the bedroom oh, for yes. some reason he'd been climbing up there and just he was so cute he was so scared yeah. poor thing so yeah. it's like you have to kind of bear that in mind as oh, well oh gosh absolutely and absolutely. Shall, how, how about toys as well because obviously they can be quite hazardous can't they yeah if, and you know coming up to sort of birthdays and Christmas and things obviously there's a huge amount of um, advertising um, to parents for children and yeah. toys are really expensive so sometimes we might feel um, that we might buy maybe a slightly cheaper alternative mm -hmm. and that's absolutely fine as long as it has the safety CE mark right. on Very somewhere important. on the toy and try and buy from a reputable manufacturer if, if if you can yeah. at, at all possible. So important. And even maybe if the, the children receive them as gifts, make sure the parents check everything Absolutely. before they give it to their Little kids. Eye, you know, glass eyes can come out of, of soft toys, yeah. you know, and they might be spiky. And, you know, you hear all of these sort of um, horrible stories about toy, cheap toys falling apart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, make sure they have got that safety mark to make sure they've gone through safety regulations and they apply to, to all of the toys, you know, okay. be it safe. Um, uh, soft toys or otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think. Do you have about ten seconds to talk about garden? Yep. Quickly, Got garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to cover everything. Yeah. yeah. Garden. First of all, make sure if you've got a balcony or back door that you know they're locked, but know where the keys are so you can Just exit in a fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speed up for you now. <laughs> right. um, but plants. Yes. So plants. Some plants. Oh, berries. Yes. Poisonous. So really important to bear wow. that in mind. Teach your child not to pick and eat things. You know, without checking with an adult first. It's not easy to be a parent, is it, Sharon? It's not. Wow. It's not. Gosh, no wonder we wrap Just... them in cotton wool, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, thank you so, so much. Pleasure. Really, really Pleasure. great advice. Well, guys, I really think that, you know, if you know other parents of small children, that you should definitely let them know about this programme so that the show will be up on the YouTube channel in a few days' time. Uh, they can just subscribe there and watch all the shows there. Chrissy B Show. So some great advice there from Sharon. Now after the break, I'll be speaking to public health advisor Sheila Merrill from the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, who's going to be talking about accident prevention in general and also telling us about what her charity does. Plus later on, I also have my three tips on feeling safe within yourself. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. 
Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everyone and today we've been speaking all about how to prevent accidents and the subsequent mental health issues that can arise from an accident in the home. So we've already spoken to Sharon Lawton who told us about child safety and if you missed the beginning of this program and want to catch up in a few days time you can find it on the YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. But before we meet our next guest let's watch uh, this tragic story of Michelle and Christian Patterson. The day that Harry died, uh, I was running a theatre company, a, th a class for children, and Dylan and Harry, Dylan's my other son, he was seven at the time, Harry was five, they both came to the class with me, and we had a very enjoyable session, it was just an after school club, you know. We were travelling back, and on the way back we talked about what we were going to have for tea, um, Harry just loved faggots, and mash, and peas, and I'd been to the butchers that day and bought them. I was very excited about, about having his tea. Um, we came up the drive and I parked the car as I normally do on the drive, but I got out of the driving seat, then got out of the passenger seat and I shouted to Harry, come on Harry, come and get your tea. I walked into the house and I walked through to the kitchen to put on the food and I could hear Dylan shouting out from the window Mummy, the car has rolled, rolled backwards. And Dylan said it in such a way that I thought he was joking and just playing a prank. But when I came into the living room and looked at the top of the drive, I could see that the car wasn't there anymore. So my initial thought was he wasn't joking and what damage is there to the car? But when I ran out of the house, Dylan was at the top of the drive and as I looked down the side of the car, where it had gone to the bottom, I could see that Harry was at the bottom, trapped between the wall and the car. So, I thought I have to, I have to think fast, I have to think fast. And I literally jumped into the car, and as I sat in the car I thought I have to focus, and I have to go straight forward, I can't let this car go any further back. So that's what I did. I put the car in two first and I drove straight up the drive. I parked the car and as I looked back I could see Harry had fallen to the floor. And then all I could hear was um, the air ambulance coming and the wind and then that landing in the field. And the air ambulance man coming over and looking at Harry and scooping him up and running down the road with him. There were just loads of people all around me. I had blood all over me. And I kept saying, is he dead, is he dead, is he dead? And the first response man said, he's alive, darling, but he's very poorly. But I knew he was lying. And I had to ring Christian. They were saying, do you want us, do you want me to ring him? Do you, friends were saying, do you want us to ring him? I said, no, I don't want anyone else to tell him what's happened. I need to ring him. So I rang Christian, who answered with such a happy voice. And I knew that I was, I knew that at that moment I was about to change, change our world forever, really. Over to the um, to the chapel of rest where Harry was, and I went in, and there was a a mark on his face here, and that's all that seemed to be wrong with him. Really, was he had a mark here and a bandage on his head, but it was a stark realization that you know. That, uh, that he was dead.
If only we'd either of us known to park in gear. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't taught that. I wasn't taught that. Michelle wasn't taught that. Um, and the police officer, we were quite harmed by it. I know a lot of people have said since that they, they have known how to do it, but the majority of people don't tend to know that that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to turn the wheels in towards the, um, the direction of the incline and park in the opposite gear. So if you're facing up, then you park it in reverse, and if you're facing down, you park it in first, and that will hold the, the car steady. But even the policeman on the day of the coroner's report said that the majority of people, I think he said 85% or something, of the people that he had asked, do you know how to do this, had said, 85% had said no, and the 15% had said yes, I've been taught it in an advanced driving test. I don't know why he was behind the car and why he didn't walk in front of the car. Um, but as Christine just mentioned, the common report is that the, at the inquest, the cause of accident was the combination of the incline of the drive and the cooling of the brakes. The car was parked, well, the handbrake was up on the car. Um, if if we'd known about parking in gear, then we, then I would have applied that, and it would have prevented the accident, which which happened. It's very important to get the message out there to say to other families, look, we've paid a very high price, too high price for any family to get this knowledge, and therefore, please, for your own sakes, for for anyone's sake, for your children's sake, for your family's sake, please. Do everything you can to prevent an accident happening on your drive or inside your house or to your family. So our deepest sympathies to that family there and hopefully that has helped viewers at home to look out for those kind of dangers. But now it's time to welcome ROSPA's public health advisor Sheila Merrill who's joining us via Skype. Hello Sheila. Hello. Hi Sheila, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. So can you tell us about ROSPA and what you do? Yes, ROSPA is a charity um, and our mission is to save lives and reduce injuries. And our vision is to um, lead the way in accident prevention. And mm -hmm. I think um, our, our mission and vision really show our passion in what we want to achieve at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Far too many people uh, being injured and suffering through um, unnecessary accidents. Rosberg cover accident prevention right across the board. Uh, we deal with road safety, road safety, um, safety education, Educational safety. Um, so we have a very, very big and, and Sheila, um, obviously, sometimes we don't really think think of these kind of accidents. You kind of don't really notice certain dangers around you. I mean, to be honest, before we we actually put the show together, some of the things that I've heard and read about, I, didn't, I couldn't even imagine happening. So it's like I think sometimes people don't really look into it until something's happened, unfortunately. But it is, it is an important message to get out there to everyone. It is an important message to get out to everybody. But what we don't want to do is to wrap people up in cotton wool. Mm -hmm. We do understand that, you know, we do have to live a life. There are, um, you know, life is all about taking risks. But if you actually think about what you're doing before you do something as to whether there's any risk involved, then you can actually reduce that, um, you know, reduce, re reduce the likelihood of, it, of having an accident. Mm -hmm. Now, Shirley, we've already spoken about child safety with, with uh, Sharon Lawton, our parenting coach. Can you tell us a bit about how we can prevent accidents as adults? <laughs> yeah, you, um, certainly. With regard to the older generation, um, with regard in, in the home, the two most at risk groups are the under fives and the over 75s. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, we really need to, you've made reference to the Falls film already, um, we really need to raise awareness of um, the need to reduce falls in the older people. It's the biggest problem. 49% of uh, all home accidents to older people, particularly those over 75, uh, are falls. Right. And is that 
for example, just by ill health or things left out? And No, basically, there, there's a combination of factors that, um, that, that actually come into play with regard to um, the risk of falling. Um, if somebody's on um, quite a few different t um, types of medication, that mm. can increase the risk. Um, people's poor mobility increases the risk. Um, obviously, there are environmental factors that increase the risk. So, there's several things to actually think about um, trying to reduce that risk. So, Sheila, do you have any general advice for, for everyone to prevent accidents in general? Well, uh, there are very simple things that everybody can do. Take a look around the home and, and actually see um, what, what is, is likely to be a risk. Mm -hmm. uh, think about moving training cables, wipe up spills immediately. Um, with regard to stairs, which is the most, where the most serious accidents happen, um, make sure you've got handrails both sides of the stairs. Um, footwear, particularly for old people, plays uh, an important part. Um, mm -hmm. good, good pair of walking shoes or slippers can be, uh, help to reduce the risk. Uh, and uh, basically, good lighting throughout the house. Good lighting? Yes. Right. Oh, yeah, that's very important, isn't it? Well, Sheila, thank you so, so much for your advice. Okay. Thank you. Lo lo lovely speaking to you. And to you. Okay. You know, as, as Sheila was speaking, I remember an accident that I had in the house. Uh, I lived somewhere where the stairs was wooden stairs. And I decided not to wear any slippers, so and I was just wearing tights at the time. So of course I went from the top of the stairs all the way down, fell all the way down to about the middle. And it I luckily I didn't hurt myself. I did have a few bruises, but that could have been something really, really serious. So don't don't try and walk down the stairs, wooden stairs in tights, because it's very, very dangerous. All right, guys, so up next I'll be sharing with you my own three tips on feeling safe within yourself. So I'll see you in just a second, right here on the Chrissy B Show. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everyone. Now today we've been discussing how to prevent accidents in the home and in any subsequent mental health issues that may arise because of an accident. But before I go to my tips, we've seen and heard a bit about what can happen to children in their homes and I want to show you more about what can also happen to the elderly. Let's take a look. I had a fall when I was uh, at home and reached up to get something off a top shelf and quite what happened I don't know I just found myself on my back and was unable to get up. I slipped on the stairs I was going to make a, have to make a bottle for my granddaughter and I just slipped on the stairs and I fell. I go forward and hit my head to the wall to the end of the step and went back and I stood there for a long time I was not a little scared, I was scared. I thought, you know, like my head was exploded or something and my head just went. First thing was um, a broken ankle. Uh, I slipped off a step. Um, so my aim is to try and be as careful as I possibly can so that I don't do it again. There are many causes for falls in the home. Lack of visibility at night is a common one. So are slippers without hard backs. Mm. This can be remedied with simple choices, like having a bedside lamp or buying full-backed slippers. People tend to forget that they're getting older, particularly men. They think they're going to go on forever, and unfortunately they're not. And things that they used to notice bothered other people are beginning to bother them. Unless they take notice of that, they're going to find themselves maybe falling downstairs or walking into vases or bushes, etc., or far more serious situations. We'd all like
like to stay independent in our own homes, and there are simple things we can do to help achieve this. For instance, take regular eye tests. Did you know an eye test is free on the NHS once every two years for the over 60s, and once every year for the over 70s? I felt so hard that I get a little blackout because my husband and all came and he could not even pick me up because he not well himself, you know. So I just had to lie down there until I could get up for myself. It was suggested that I went to a place where I could get advice should I fall over again. And they suggested that it's a very good idea if in every room you have a reasonably solid chair because you can then use the chair to help yourself to your feet. Uh, another precaution I think that one should take is to be very careful about the placing of rugs in the home. It's very easy to move a chair, knock a rug and then trip over it as you get up. So there we have a video that also highlighted what Sheila was saying earlier. But now I want to talk about safety from a different angle and that's feeling emotionally safe and safe within yourself. So here are three of my tips for you today. So the first one is to choose your life partner carefully. So, you know, you really need to be with someone that you can actually trust. And this is an issue that a lot of people go through. They end up rushing into a relationship and that they end up with someone that doesn't treat them nicely that you know some some people men and women actually because we've even had a, a show about uh, men that are abused by their wives their partners so you need you need to make sure that you are with someone that treats you right that isn't abusive you know whether that be physically emotionally verbally because that in itself makes you feel very uncomfortable and unsafe so with, with your life partner, with someone that you're going to share a home with, you need to feel comfortable to walk into your own home. You need to look forward to going home. And as I've said before, that's what I feel every day when I go home. I look forward to seeing my husband. I'm not treading on eggshells. I'm not um, watching what I say because I'm scared of his reaction. No, I'm, I'm myself. I'm completely open with him because we are best friends. And if you don't have that in your home, if, if you go home every day and you feel nervous when you're walking through the front door or you feel uncomfortable in any way, that's a sign that there's something wrong there. So if, if you're in that situation already, I would say evaluate your relationship and see whether it's really going anywhere. And if, you know, if this is really going to make you happy, and if not, consider getting some kind of counselling or help. Or if you're just dating someone, you know, you're just going out, but you see these these little signs, maybe these these little um, sarcastic comments sometimes, or, or comments that put you down in any way. Anything like that that doesn't make you, you know, makes you feel uncomfortable. You kind of, but maybe you just kind of sweep it under the carpet. Oh, it's nothing. Maybe he or she's just having a bad day. Th those are signs. Those are big warning signs that you shouldn't ignore because you know once you you move in together, it's not going to get any better. Unfortunately, it normally tends to get worse. So. You know, be, be safe within your relationship because your home could be great. So you can have a lovely house. You can, you know, everything can be in its place. No, no dangers anywhere in your house. But if you're not okay with your partner, that's a big, big issue and you won't feel safe. My second point is make your home welcoming. So this is something now completely different. Okay, so we've spoken about relationship. Your home now is an extension of you and you do need to feel comfortable when you walk into your house. So if your house is full of clutter, full of things you know, that you don't need, things from the past, you should consider having a good clear out. So declutter your home. That obviously will lead to it being safer because obviously the more cluttered a house is, the easier it is to have an accident in the first place. So, but not, not just for the, the safety element, but just to feel good when you walk in. When you, when you walk into a house that's full of stuff or there's mess everywhere, it's dirty, it stinks, <laughs> you feel uncomfortable. Your home is meant to be somewhere where you go home, you, you relax, you unwind, you um, let go of all the troubles of the day. So, you know, it's, it's good to get into the habit of decluttering regularly, getting things, getting rid of things that you don't need. And maybe if uh, your house is kind of um, 
let's say a bit neglected and it's been like that for a while why don't you set yourself a challenge and start doing things bit by bit and at the same time you could also instead of having the tv on or music on why don't you just have some quiet time while you're decluttering or while you're clearing out things and reflect on yourself as well so think about the things that you need to maybe declutter from from inside maybe bad feelings that you have for people, things that have happened in the past that aren't you holding on to, that aren't doing you any good. So let's start to let go of those things and refocus on what's positive. And trust me, when, when you walk into a nice, clean, um, clutter-free home, you are able to relax better and you do feel safer. It's, it's going to be like your space. And you know, it doesn't matter what kind of space it is. You might live in a huge house or you might just live in a room. But if that area, that's your area, if that's kept nicely, then you will feel good when you walk into your own home. And my third point is face those demons. Now, what do I mean by that? So a lot of people have those inner demons inside that, you know, it could be things that have happened to them in the past. It could be issues with people. So anything that you, um, that you're going through that takes away your joy, takes away the peace. Maybe you feel like, constantly on edge, constantly nervous, then that, those things need to be dealt with. So again, going back to my first two points, you're, you could have a great relationship, right? You can, you know, everything could be really good with your partner. You have no issues with your partner. You, you love them very much. They treat you well. You can have an amazing house. So you've got everything that you need. There's no clutter anywhere. Everything's fine in your home. But if you have things inside, if you haven't faced certain issues, certain demons that have been, that have been kind of like putting you down and these, these things that you've had in your mind and these kind of negative thoughts. If you don't deal with those, no matter what's going on around you, you won't be happy. You won't feel safe. Your, your life won't be, won't be one that, you know, you, you, you have pleasure every day waking up. So do deal with those things. I know sometimes it's very scary to to go there in the first place, to kind of uncover things, to get to the root of certain problems. It's a scary thing to do, but the good thing is that you don't have to do that on your own. There's help available for you. You can talk to someone that you trust, you can have counselling, you can contact me as well. But the important thing is that you do face anything that you're going through. All right, guys, so I hope those, those three points have helped you in some way. So overall for the, for the programme today, the lesson is prevention is better than cure. And that's the general rule for everything in life. So make sure, you know, you check your house, make, it, make sure that everything is, is accident proof. And hopefully we have helped you prevent any kind of accidents. So, but if unfortunately you or one of your loved ones have gotten into an accident, do make sure they get the support that they need. And remember, never suffer in silence. Well, guys, sadly, that's all we have time for on today's program. But if you have a story that you'd like to share to help others in some way, or if there's a topic that you would like to see discussed here on this program, maybe there's something that's been bothering you. Maybe you have a, a relative, a friend that's going through something and you feel they would benefit on watching a show that specifically talking about that topic, please do get in touch. You can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow and also comment on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And also, if you'd like to get in touch with me personally, you can visit my website, mylifeafterdepression.com. And you can also read all about my story there, the depression that I used to go through, the panic attacks, the OCD, the phobias, and all the other issues that I used to have but managed to overcome. And let me tell you, life on the other side of all those issues is amazing and it can happen for you as well. Don't think that you were born to suffer in any way or that your life cannot change. It's impossible to change because that's just not true and I'm living proof of that and I'm here to help you as well. All right guys, so that is time. It's time for us to go now. So until next time, bye-bye for now.